Many people were said to have been injured and houses destroyed as a suspected explosion rocked Reverend Adeniola Street off Adei Street, Old Bodija Estate, Ibadan, Tuesday night. The explosion, which occurred around 7 p.m., affected many buildings, and while some persons were said to have died, many were injured. Meanwhile, the governor of your state, Sheyi Makinde, has assured of improved safety, adding that the medical bills of victims of the Bodija blast will be footed by the government. Governor Makinde made the assurance while paying a visit to the scene of the yet-to-be-verified explosion at Bodija, which has resulted in death, injuries and damage of about 30 houses, including the houses of former Governor Bola Ige, ex-Governor Yola Oladokun, and some staff of the University of Ibadan, shopping malls and hotels. We've always said to people that uh, uh, when you say something, you say something, and then the authorities should be able to do something. Um, uh, this is quite unfortunate. Uh, at this stage, it's uh, just to uh, rescue anyone that is still uh, under the, uh, uh, the rubble here. And also the people that, uh, that have been taken to the hospital uh, to give them uh, care. Um, and uh, uh, also some of the people uh, who have their houses uh, destroyed provide temporary accommodation for them. There must have been some kind of an explosion because, you know, I wasn't at home, so I was called to, you know, come home, that everything has been destroyed and blah, blah, blah. Uh, people started calling, so I, I, I ran home and I came to see this chaos. Um, so there was an explosion that shook everywhere. I think the tremors even went as far as you know, people heard it in Jericho, you know, all over the place. So um, you just can't explain it. You know? Meanwhile, the National Emergency Management Agency has disclosed that over 20 houses were affected in the Tuesday night explosion that rocked the Bodija area of Ibado, the Oyo state capital. In a statement on Wednesday, NEMA said there was no information yet on casualty figures, but revealed that a suspected improvised explosive device caused the explosion on Tuesday night. Panic gripped about a resident over an explosion that occurred at Dejo Uyelishi streets in the Bodija area of the city. Neymar, however, assured residents of the state that security has been beefed up in the area, while arrangements for more support to facilitate the operations are in progress, saying the situation has been brought under control while arrangements are going on to ensure smooth operation. On its part, the Oyo State Police Command, which confirmed the explosion, said there has been ample deployment of their men to forestall any breakdown of law and order. Now let's take you away from Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. A former presidential spokesman, Femi Adishino, has disregarded claims that the Aso Rock Villa in Abuja is a haunted place. Speaking on Tuesday, Adishino said that he enjoyed his eight years living in the villa. When asked about claims made by his predecessor, Ruben Abati, who had noted that fire erupted in his room on his first night there in 2016, Adishino said he did not see anything like that as there were no witches or wizards. Adishino, who served as former President Muhammad Buhari's spokesman, had earlier on Tuesday launched a book Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Special Advisor, Media and Publicity 2015 to 2023 in Abuja. The event was graced by his ex principal Buhari, President Bola Tinubu, ex head of state Yakubu Gumon, among other dignitaries. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has interrogated the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluwa Toyin Madeng over an alleged link to 585.2 million naira fraud involving the suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Beta Edu. The AGF was squeezed by EFCC interrogators at the Anti-Graft Agency's headquarters, Jabi Abuja, on Monday. 
Details of the interrogation obtained on Tuesday revealed that Madain was grilled for over six hours and was released with no condition. In the evening, she was queried over the payment of 585.2 million naira of government funds from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs into the private bank account of a government official. A leaked memo had revealed how Edu in December 2023 requested the Accountant General to transfer the money from the National Social Investment Office account to the account of Onielu, the accountant, over the grants for vulnerable groups under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. However, the AGF in a statement countered the claim by the suspended minister while noting that allocations were released to self-accounting MDAs in line with the budget and such MDAs were responsible for the implementation of their projects and payments for such projects. Also, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has announced that its operatives in Lagos have apprehended ex-minister Charles Chukwemeka Ugu for an alleged 3.6 billion naira conspiracy and fraud in the commerce and industry sector. EFCC's head of media and publicity, Dele Uyewali, disclosed that Charles Chukwemeka Ugu and Chief Geoffrey Ekema were arrested on January 11th, 2024 at number two, Musa Yaradua Way, New Oweri, Imo State. According to Oyewale, the arrest resulted from a petition by a new generation bank to the commission, which outlined alleged fraud involving a company, Ebony Agro Industries Limited, connected to the former minister. According to the petitioner, investigations revealed that Ugu and Ekema Managing Director Ebony Agro Industries Limited allegedly obtained a loan facility from the bank for the purchase and production of polished rice, but failed to meet all his obligations to the bank and all efforts to get him to repay the loan facility proved abortive. Ogo was a former president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and was in the People's Democratic Party primaries for Imo State Governor in the April 2007 elections. He lost the primary, but was appointed Minister for Commerce and Industry 2007 by the late President Umar Musa Yaradua and in September 2007 headed a Nigerian delegation to China for a Nigeria-China Business and Investment Forum. The House of Representatives will on Wednesday commence investigative hearing on alleged mismanagement of COVID-19 intervention funds from 2020 to 2022. This series of hearings organized by the House Public Accounts Committee runs from Wednesday, January 17 to Friday, January 26 at the National Assembly Complex, Abuja. The Public Account Committee Chairman, Bamidili Salami, had in an earlier communication invited 59 federal government ministries, departments and agencies to appear before it for the exercise. These MDAs grouped into eight include the Accountant General of the Federation, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Nigerian Meteorological Agency, and the Rural Electrification Agency. Others include the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, National Obstetric Fistula Center, Abakaliki, as well as a large number of federal medical centers, federal university teaching hospitals, and federal neuropsychiatric hospitals across the country. In a statement issued on Tuesday, House spokesman Akin Rotimi said each MDA is to be represented by its chief executive officer, head of finance, head of procurement, and officers that are conversant with the expenditures of the COVID-19 intervention funds. And barely 24 hours after his inauguration for a second term in office, the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodimma, on Tuesday dissolved his cabinet. Uzodimma, who was overwhelmingly elected for his second tenure in November last year, sacked all commissioners and other political appointees with immediate effect. He is expected to constitute a new cabinet by submitting a new list of commissioner nominees to the State House of Assembly 
for screening and confirmation. Appointees affected by the dissolution included the Secretary to the State Government, Commissioners, Special Advisors, Senior Special Assistants, the Chief of Staff and the Chief Press Secretary. Uzadema thanked his former appointees for their contributions towards the success of his administration during his first term in office. The governor insisted that the dissolution had become necessary to rejig the new administration for optimal performance and new direction. Now let's take you back to Abuja. The Supreme Court on Wednesday reserved judgment in an appeal by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate Seidu Umar against the election of the Secretary of State Governor Hamad Aliu. The five-member panel, led by Justice Kudirat Kikireko, adjourned the matter for judgment after listening to the argument from the parties involved in the appeal. The Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja had affirmed Aliu's election, but Umar and the PDP had alleged that Aliu and his deputy, Idris Gober, were no, not eligible to contest the governorship poll. They also alleged that the election was not only marred by irregularities, but was also not conducted in substantial compliance with provisions of the Electoral Act 2022. The Court of Appeal, however, dismissed their appeal for lacking in merit and not satisfied. Umar and the PDP approached the Apex Court.